Hello YouTube. I wanted to uh, share with you my motorized plasma cutting track that I made and I'm using it with my Harbor Freight welding table that I converted into a plasma cutter table. It's a six inch trough. Actually, let me back up. It's a one by two frame going around. Uh, six inch trough. Uh, two inches of water down in the bottom. I had a four inch trough, but above 60 PSI, the water splashed up. So I changed it to a six amp, or I'm sorry, six inch deep pan, and it worked fine. So, all right, let me explain to you what I got. So right now I've got my best arc uh, BTC 50 DP, it's a 50 amp plasma cutter. I also have the 65 amp plasma cutter from them. But this is only 3 16 plate right there. And I'll run it and cut it here in a second. So I wanted to explain what I did. So I come out of my plasma cutter with the same factory connection that screws on to trigger the plasma connector. Um, I run a 10 foot coiled 18 gauge uh, cord into the back of my control box with the same screw on connector. Now the control box is nothing more than a project box. It's like six bucks from Amazon with a pulse modulator motor control. Now with that control comes the speed and on and off, you can see me adjusting the speed, I think. There's off, there's back on. Uh, it comes with the speed control, the reversing switch, and the digital readout. So it's not very hard to put in, it's pretty easy. But anyway, so that's what's inside there. Now I have a start, uh, start stop for the plasma cutter. That's just wired in to the start stop terminal over here. Um, this is, I'm using a Harbor Freight drill and I'll get to that, but this is the battery, it's actually just Velcroed on here, that came with the drill, there's the charging port, and I can plug that in, where it says power in, so I can plug that in, power out is going to the drill, um, all them wires are 18 gauge silicone wires, but the drill battery is okay after, I don't know, three cuts or so, it kind of starts to slow down. So what I did is I just picked up an external um, 30 amp power supply, uh, 110, 12 volts DC from Amazon. Again, I'll put links to everything. Um, and I got it cranked up to 13.8 volts. So I actually get a little more speed out of it. So that pretty much covers, and then all these connections are just friction fit. They don't lock in with the screw like the plasma cutter, but they're plenty tight. I mean, you can see they're not going anywhere. So that's the control and the plasma cutter and the power supply. So now let's come over to the unit. So what I've got here is a linear track I think it was 39 inches long I wanted to make it so that I could cut a 36 inch piece with no problem um, and I can do that because I actually have 37 inches of cut capacity so the track is uh, I made all, every all the plates are 3 16 um, the bearings are half inch and the all thread is half inch. Now, I'll tell you right now, I tried 3 8 inch all thread, and it just didn't work right. Um, you know, all thread is not precision made, but the 3 8 was just too flimsy. So I ended up going with half inch. And I got the pillow block bearings there. Obviously, they're greasable. It's got the, oh, I don't know. I think they're called horizontal roller bearings right there. That's what the track rides on, on this machine round. Um, 
Then I did install mounting plates. Again, everything's 3 16 I have one here and one here so I can cl uh, clamp it to my Harbor Freight welding table. I believe they're 24 inches apart, maybe 22, somewhere around there. And then on the end, I also have plates where I could clamp it right there to a bigger, longer table so I can get the full 36. But anyway, I'll, I'll run a demo here for you in a second. So what I've got over here is a one inch steel collar uh, welded, obviously, uh, to the plate. And then the AG60P torch is the one that this fits, which is a very popular torch. Uh, again, 3 16 inch plate. I put a slot so I can adjust the height for, with my 65 amp, I can actually cut up to three quarters of an inch. But, and then in the back, let me move around here. In the back, I've got this thumb screw. So I can actually loosen this thumb screw, kick this back, and I can cut a 45 degree wedge in. Um, and then depending on the thickness of the material, I also added a second bolt right there uh, that my thumb screw can lock into in case I need to lower it more for a 45 degree cut on say quarter inch or something thin like that. And I've cut up to five eighths inch with this thing already. And that's just with the, the 50 amp plasma cutter. So, okay, so down here, let me move this. Oh yeah, it's on wheels too. So down here, same bearing, half inch. I put a socket, it's got a little bit of float here, so it's not binding on anything. Um, I would recommend a drill with a clutch, just because it's an added safety. You can see I have the clutch set on three, and you can literally stop this with your hand. So that's just a testament to how smooth everything is. Um, then I have some, I think that's three quarter inch coming off a piece of angle iron and that's how I have it strapped in and you know I was thinking about building a box and enclosing this and all that but all it's going to do is add more weight to it so I don't know if I'll do that or not we'll see but I made this about a month ago and uh, man it's so handy it's so nice um, I'll show you here all right, so I think that explains everything it would take to build it, how I built it, what I built it with. Um, if you have any questions, put them in the comments and I'll try to answer it. So, all right, so let's see. I got to do this one-handed because I have to hold my phone. All right, so what I do, 316s, I can cut it. A speed of 55 no problem I can actually cut it at 65 but uh, the cuts just super smooth at 55 so then all I have to do is hit forward now forward forward is coming towards me reverse is going back the reason I set it up that way is because I want the torch and the drill and everything away from me so I'm standing here and there's no mechanical parts. All I have to do is flip my switches on the control box. Now to start it, I'm simply gonna hit forward, and then when the torch gets close to the metal, I'm gonna start the plasma cutter. Then after the torch clears the metal, it actually automatically shuts off, but I shut it off manually too. And then I just reverse it. So, Again, if you have any questions about the build, um, just put them in the comments. You know, I'm really new to this welding stuff, like three months, and um, I got all kinds of welders, plasma cutters, Hobart. I might have went overboard, you know, only three months. But anyway, um, it, was, it wasn't bad. The layout was the trickiest thing. And like I said, when I put it together with 3 8 all thread, it was just too shaky. I mean, I wanted it perfect. You know, I'm one of them 
good ain't good enough, perfect is expected, guys. So it wasn't perfect, so it's perfect now. So, all right, here we go. See, again, I'm doing this one-handed. So we're gonna go, and watch, one other thing to watch, watch how well, I mean, I'm in my garage with the door closed. Watch how well this table controls all the sparks. All right, here we go. stupid all right there you go so the cut is super clean where's the camera okay the cut is super clean that dross would just knock right off um actually hold on I'll just go ahead and grab my hammer and i'll knock that off clean no ridges I mean man it oh, missed a piece of dross right there it just pretty much looks like a machine cut so there you go if you have any questions again post them in the comments on uh, the table or you know whatever um, I had this lying around so I wanted to come up with a use for it and this is what I came up with so all right YouTube you guys take care be safe out there uh, if you like the video, please give me a thumbs up. You can subscribe if you like to. I'm not a huge channel. I do welding and motorcycle repair stuff. So uh, anyway, talk to you later. Have a good day. Bye.